Everybody, welcome! Falcon and Crown Takers. Originally, we're gonna do a one video look at it, Crown Takers, but honestly, in the process of me trying to figure out the game itself for the video, I have become addicted to this game. The best way I can kind of describe Crown Takers to you is think of a, a grab bag of a bunch of different genres just thrown in there. You have a little bit of roguelike, light. I guess I should probably make that clear because people get a little bit iffy when you say roguelike. Not in the proper way that, you know, some people describe roguelike as. There is your uh, strategy RPG type of elements. There is a little bit of, um, I guess every time you start a new game, the map always changes on you. So you have the whole randomized quote unquote dungeon thing going on. There is also like, you know, even if I could throw it out there, like a choose your own adventure type of thing, if that makes any sense. A little bit of tabletop elements as well. It's honestly a game that's really, really hard to describe. I could kind of compare it a little bit to Rogue Legacy in the sense that when you do a one run, um, whenever you do die and you restart again, you kind of keep some of those stats, which you not exactly everything, but some of it. And it also has like the perfect blend of ju the just one more run type of element that's also really, really important in games. Like think of something like Binding of Isaac or Spelunky where you die and you're just kind of like, let me just try it one more time. Next thing you know, you're like, you know, three hours deep into the game. You're like, dude, where did my day go? That's what Crown Takers is to me. So all that said and done, let's actually get into the game and show you what I'm talking about here. <clears throat> let's see, we're going to do a little bit of a new game. Now, this is kind of what's kind of interesting to me. Normal is locked, so you have to start off as easy. I'm not entirely sure if this is kind of like a quasi type of thing, because easy has not been easy whatsoever for me. So I'm not sure if once you beat easy, you unlock normal. I'm not entirely sure of the specifics just yet. I've been rolling with easy because that's the only thing available to me. So um, we're going to go with easy again, because that's the only option we have. Over here, you get to choose um, your hero. Um, I don't think this really changes much other than just the picture of the guy itself. So. We're gonna go with this um, peasant looking individual just to kind of uh, make the story feel out a little bit better here. And as you can see, easy is all experience acquired by the hero and mercenaries during previous games is kept, so that's the rogue legacy element that I mentioned. You no longer need to defeat the boss at the end of each level. While normal, I do believe you always start off as level 1. If I'm right, normal mode is the true gameplay experience. Each mercenary starts the game at level 1. You need to defeat the boss at the end of each level each time. So. Essentially, with normal, there's a boss at the end of each level that you have to defeat a normal, and then your mercenaries always start off at level 1, while in the easy mode, which we're playing in right now, the <clears throat> mercenaries, if you level them up throughout the game, they also retain their stats as well, or at least their level ups, not their stats. You can kind of choose your stats after you level them up, once you acquire them. So, you know, I'll show you how this goes. So, again, I'm not entirely sure when this unlocks, but I'm going to keep going playing and see if we can unlock it ourselves. So, easy, it's good to go. And I'll shut up here for a moment, um, there's no really audio for this. But for people that are interested in the story itself, it's kind of really mellow, the story isn't really a big deal, it's all gameplay honestly. But we will see the intro just for the, um, those of you that are interested in it. And I'll be quiet for now. <clears throat> Alrighty, and there we go. So there, you know, just a quick little introduction. You are just some random bastard peasant of a son of the king, apparently. And everybody, all of his other, you know, big general sons have failed. So you're his last hope, and essentially. So, you know, he's gonna reward you with riches and possibly even be the king after you're done completing your um, journey and adventure here. So, as I said, when you start off, you will have carried over stats or levels, I should say. So really quickly, let's check out our level spot here. I noticed like a really big uh, control emphasis as well on the layout or the UI. So uh, I'm playing with a you know keyboard and mouse here, but 
I'd imagine that if I plugged my controller in, this would probably be pretty easy as well, so, you know, it's a plus for any of you people that are kind of, um, a little bit more comfortable playing with a gamepad. I personally am myself, but recently I've been doing a little bit more keyboard and mouse type of thing here. But either way, um, we have, I think, two levels, or I'm up to level three with this guy right now, so each level lets you pick a certain stat that you want to go up here. So I'm going to go with, um, Critical. Critical. And that's it, huh? Alright, so I'm gonna go with Critical twice. I have found that Critical has really worked for me. You know, your mileage might vary from mine, but at least for me, Critical's been working out pretty good. As you can see, you don't start off with any of the stats or any of the equipment upgrades that you do. You just start off with the level itself. So we're good here. Let me open up my map to show you this here really quickly. So this right here will tell you where you want to aim for. You want to go over here, and this is a tabletop element that I mentioned because you move like in a... kind of like a grid-based type of tabletop element here and then you could interact with certain locations and um, areas of interest. So um, your main goal is all the way to get up to here, right? We've I've cleared at least this first part. I still haven't gotten through the second one, I'm pretty sure, so maybe we'll be able to do some progress with this video. We'll see. Um, when you start off, you're over here. I'm going to check out my house really quickly. This is your house. You already know that, and you are going to miss it after a few days. I'm going to search this out. Despite the obvious poverty of the place, a few surprises await you. We have Claude, which is used to upgrade your armor, level 1 armor, by the way. And a few apples to restore some HP. We're going to take everything with us. Over here, this is exhausting. You have to kind of take a, uh, notice of this, because the further you get into the game, the more you will get tired. You have to either rest at inns, or buy some, or find, buy or find fireplaces so you could rest um, during, whenever you get tired. The other element that kind of I wanted to mention was that it also takes a little bit of, um, I want to say half minute hero or one way heroics, where the longer you take during each, well, the longer you take in the game, like to explore areas of interest, level up, the harder the game gets. So your level, your enemies are always leveling the longer you take. So you kind of have to balance that out. Is it worth going to grab a certain item or level up a bit more to deal with harder enemies, or is it just better to rush it? It's kind of like up to you to figure out. So we already checked this out, and we're ready to go. So keep in mind the whole leveling premise here of your enemies as well. We're going up here right now, so from up here we have a few choices to go down this way or to the right. If we look at our map here, upwards or left will kind of lead to our ultimate goal, so I'm going to say we're going to go up around here and then come back and circle around here and finally hit the last area. We're not going to deal with the boss with this um, stage just because I already beat the boss, so... And by the boss, I'm not talking about Bruce Springsteen. So we have Blacksmith and Oak, uh, Old Oak Inn. With the Blacksmith, you could buy a few items and you could also upgrade your equipment. We do have the Clod, right? So we might as well go to Armor and use this to upgrade to level 2 now. This will open up a slot where you could kind of um, put an item in there, a rune, to give you a specific type of element or bonus to your armor itself. Uh, weapons, we have not nothing to do with that. So... We have four gold. Let's see about the merchant. The merchant usually has a few upgrade items here, so we'll buy this, and we already have that. Armor rune, and we also have... This is going to be for what? Dodge, and reduce incoming damage by one. That's pretty good, actually. Let me buy this one as well. This is going to kind of put me broke, but I think it might be worth it. So we bought that. Let's go back to the blacksmith, and we will upgrade. It doesn't really co it doesn't cost anything to upgrade your weapon other than just the material itself, so that is a big plus right there. We'll upgrade this to, you know, I guess level 1. And then we'll put this rune in there, and this will be reducing incoming damage by 1, so that should be pretty helpful for us. And there we go. That's all I can do here. If you go to the Old Oak Inn, this is where you recruit your mercenaries. The first world or the first level mercenary is always free. Level 2 and onward, you have to pay for their services. But again, if you're playing in the opening mode, which is easy, they do retain their levels from prior. So if you go to Mercenary, I usually like to hire the sniper first to give me some range um, capabilities, so I will do that. He's up to level 3, and then this, uh, this is a spear dude who's level 2. So we're going to go with the sniper first and foremost, acquire him for free. Waitress will, you know, sell you a few items, and this is the fireplace I talked about whenever your exhaust meter is pretty low. You have a resurrection scroll, you know, revives a mercenary. When your character dies, the avatar main character, game over, you start a new, so keep that in mind. You can always revive your mercenaries, but never yourself. Strength potion and bo a bottle of wine, which restores 10 HP. And this is going to be 3 gold, huh? Mm, I really have nothing to really barter with right now, so I'm going to have to hold off. And then, you could do things like this, which is juggling, I think there's chess, arm wrestling. This is all kind of like an RNG type of thing, where you play, you gamble a little money, you probably win, you probably lose. 
In my experience, I've lost every single time, so I'm not sure how viable this is right now. So we'll leave. And the innkeeper is obviously to rest, and that'll also, you know, um, increase your exhaust meter back up. So we have a battle right here, which we will take advantage of. And yeah, we... Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. I wanted to level my dude up. My um, archer has a few levels to acquire, but unfortunately I fucked that up, so we're just gonna go into this fight. Hopefully it shouldn't be too bad right now, because it's still the first world option. So, the more you level up, the more you will acquire, I guess, grid walking space right now. Since I'm level 3 with my hero, I could actually go all the way back over here and attack this enemy. Uh, this is where I talked about the whole strategy RPG type of element in terms of the battle. I could basically walk all the way back here with one of my turns. Your turns are indicated by these little two um, flashy things here. So I could move behind him and then the next turn get a backstab, which would instantly be a kill more than likely. So I'm going to do that. You could also switch who you want to, you know, take your first turn with. So you're not limited to only one person. You could kind of uh, mix and match, do your things. This over here is um, skills based on your class. So your main avatar has this guy, which allows him to swap positions with any mercenary on the map. So I could swap over here. If I wanted to, I could go into guard, which provides a bonus to dodge and allows you to retaliate on the next attack. And then the archer has a watchtower, which increases range tile by one and allows you to shoot over obstacles, must be dismantled to move again. And we have overwatch, which is, you know, if you're familiar with um, XCOM, you know, you take a few shots on incoming enemies, I think it's only two. So, let me start off with our main dude over here, walk back over on this side and we will get a backstab. You know, enough for the kill. Oh, it was only a one um, enemy battle, perfect. And you saw when I killed him, I got another star. If you kill an enemy, you also get an extra turn, so keep that in mind. And a little bit of experience, probably not much because, you know, we're kind of a little bit higher level than these guys, so the experience bonus isn't going to be that great. But we did get an armor room, which reduces incoming damage by one, so we got another one of these guys, we will take everything. And now let me properly level up my sniper here. So, do I go to critical or dodge? You know, as a sniper, I try to keep him away from, you know, danger, so... Let's go with critical and health. I like that. Alrighty. And we only have one gold. I think that we could probably go back and buy an armor upgrade for the archer. But we'll probably do that on the way back because looking at our map here... Yeah, we're going to circle back either way. So let's finish up over here first. If we move up here, we could do something in the watchtower. This is again another random event. There's an imposing tower alongside the path. It allows the garrison to secure the surrounding area and access their camp. There was a real bloodshed inside that military building. Corpses from the Dukes and your father's armies are lying everywhere on the ground. Nobody came to clean this place after the bloody battle. So let's search it out. And we found tainted meat. It seems pretty unwise to eat it, but desperate times call for desperate measures. And we also have a book, which is good, which is good to be sold at stores. That's the only purpose for these items, to my knowledge. So we will take everything. Good. We can move up here or go down here. I guess we'll probably come down here first, and then we'll do the rest of this, so... Let's move down over here, and we will come down to another cottage. We will check this out. It, not, it may not be a fancy inn, but that small house in front of you will be perfect for taking shelter from the rain. As you walk inside the abandoned building, you are greeted by the sounds of dozens of rats running away. Resting here won't be enjoyable, but at least tiny beasts don't eat big bones. So, I could get rid of the rats. I could just search the area or leave. I'm going to actually just search, because I don't think we need to rest here anyway. So, um... Oh, dude. <laughs> Our sniper was bitten, so we lost 2 HP. And we absolutely got nothing out of that, so that was, uh, again, random event shit happens like that, and you have to just kind of deal with it. One day has passed and your enemies have grown stronger, and that's the element I talked about, has time progresses, your enemies will indeed um, level up. And you can see over here how many days in you are. So let's go into this cave. Uh, thanks to your torches flickering and glow, you find the entrance of a cave. It is wide enough to let you let your group walk inside. There are no signs of human or animal life inside the cave, and there are no plants either. It serves as a good shelter, nothing more. So let's search this out. Your storm, you storm the place, breaking the branches of the trees and digging the ground into you. Eventually find the treasure. We found a bravery potion which restores your action point by one in battle. Another book to sell and an intriguing mushroom. I'm not sure if these always have a random bonus stack to them. I've eaten this one before and they restored 2 HP. I've eaten another kind and it actually made me lose 4 HP, so I'm not sure if it's random or if you are just supposed to remember what mushroom does what. But since we have a few items to sell, let's go back over here and possibly upgrade our people a little bit here. So let's go to the merchant. We will sell these books for 
First and foremost, get a little bit of cash here. We're up to seven. And then the Tainted Mead. I've never used this before, so I'm just going to sell it. Now we have this dude over here, which again, I'm not sure what his purpose really is. I'm going to buy the Clod and this to upgrade our Sniper. So buy this and this. Done over here. We'll go into the Blacksmith and we will go to our Sniper. Upgrade that and upgrade that. And he has an armor slot now, so we'll give him the reduced damage. And we have no weapon runes just yet, so we have to hold off on that. So, at least everybody is up to level 1 weaponry, which is good. Let me look at my map here, and I think we are good to go. I'm going to circle back then around, and then finally hit our end goal here. So, we'll go down this way. Boom through here. We already checked this cave out, I'm pretty sure. I... No, I haven't. Uh, you catch sight of a cave whose entrance is hidden behind the branches of the surrounding trees. The floor is covered with animal tracks, old and recent. Unfortunately, it seems the place is unoccupied at the moment, so let's search it out. As you turn back, after investigating the cave, you find yourself face to face with a huge bear. <laughs> okay, so, random battle here. Oh my lord, that is a huge bear. 20 HP, holy shit. Alright. So, that's a lot of HP. Okay, we might die here. I'm not entirely sure how this is going to go. So, first and foremost, let me move Sniper Man. I'm going to say, I could take a shot with Sniper Man. Should we do that? I'm going to take a shot with Sniper Man. I'm going to see the damage capability here. Three is pretty low. So I'm going to come and have him hang out here. And you will face this direction in your end turn. This dude's going to come over here and wreck my shit. So I need to kind of um, protect the Sniper a little bit. So with Hero, I will probably... I want to set up for a backstab if I can. Let me come over here. And we're going to defend... Just so that we get, like, a opportunity to re retaliate after he attacks us. So let's use guard, and I am going to face this way, hopefully. Now it's going to be the enemy's turn. Here comes big badass bear who ran by me, and he's going to get a backstab on me. Nope, he's going to attack the archer for one damage. Not too bad. Alrighty, so I'll live with that. He could have really gotten a backstab on me, so, you know, kudos on <laughs> my luck right there. So, two to four damage, huh? Well, we might as well try it, so... Four? That'll work. And I guess we're going to try it one more time, more than likely. Although, I can move over here and just avoid a backstab altogether. Nah, let me just go for an attack. Another 4 HP? I'll take it. So he's down to 9. Choose a direction, uh, we will just face him up front. Now, he has an attack of opportunity right here. As you can see, if I want to move away, there's an exclamation point over the bear. He will uh, attack my sniper as I move away. I could counteract that if I had a potion for invisibility, but I don't. So... We are going to take a hit regardless of which, so let's try to move over here. Here's the opportunity. Luckily, we did dodge that. And now we can take a shot here, or... Just move back and stay kind of safe. I am going to actually move over here, just so he doesn't backstab me. And I'm just going to face this way. Alright, so enemy turn again. He's going to go after my hero, that's fine. He's going to guard for the last turn, that's good. So that gives me a few chances here, so now... With my archer here, I'm going to go and attack him. 75 chance to hit. Critical. Perfect. If we can land a few of these shots... Ooh, two crits. And we're going to just face this way. Our hero should be able to finish this off now. Perfect, there we go. Alright, we got a victory. How much experience is this? Pretty minimal considering the HP of that enemy, but that's okay. So we're going to take a weapon rune. Oh, plus 10 critical chance. Excellent. Alrighty. Tomb of Heroes. I have never seen this before, so this is completely new to me. What is this all about? Tomb of Heroes. Let's find out. So, I mean, I'm still learning the game. I've probably played a total of like an hour, an hour and a half, just because I keep doing runs over and over, but... Um, there's still a lot of new things for me here. You enter a disturbingly quiet clearing. At the center, you can see the banners of heroes who fell during an ancient war. This, is, this place has been deserted for a long time, and even animals seem to avoid it. We're gonna approach it, obviously. As you advance towards the banners, you can hear the voices of the dead heroes. They already know everything about your quest and address you as if you are one of them. They can transfer their mystical energy to one of your companions. So our hero has gained actually two levels. Sweet. All right. So we're going to go with a critical and... You know, let's actually just up that crit chance up. It's been really helpful for me, so I'm not going to, you know, look at gift horsing them out here. So I think we're done. Other than going back to level up my people a little bit in terms of equipment. We're just going to keep going forward and go up here. There's going to be some wolves over here. One day has passed, so we're already three days in, and we're still in the first level, just because there's been a lot to explore. So, let's see. Alrighty, so we have two enemies this time around. Our hero could actually 
Can't get a backstab anywhere, huh? I kind of want to come over here and hopefully get enough for a kill here. Not enough. Because I have a feeling we're going to probably get an attack of opportunity when I move away. Yep. So, our archer is going to be in a bad spot here. I'm going to move him this way. Hopefully I can dodge. Nope. One damage. That's all right. Now, I can't attack him because I'm an archer. So oh, dude, I just walked into a second attack of opportunity. Nice play. Nice move there, Slick. All right. Let me use this um, bravery potion for one more action point. Okay, so let me move out of the way. I want to basically get the fuck out of here because this dude's going to come over here and attack me afterwards. So now that we're out of here, I could take a shot actually and get the kill. You know what? Let's go for the kill instead. Alright, let's avoid any sort of uh, shenanigans. And since I killed him, I did get another move. And I instead, I could go into Overwatch, but... I'm going to actually play it safe and get back over here and choose a direction over here. Alrighty. This guy should come after our hero more than likely. Perfect. Next turn, he's dead. Your turn. Alrighty. So now, let's go to our hero here. This should probably be a one-hit kill. Not quite. Let me get the kill with the archer. I'm going to do this because uh, there's something I haven't really mentioned about the avatar or the mercenaries here, but you actually can open up further mercenaries if you meet a certain set of requirements. I think the first one is killing 30 enemies with the mercenary itself. Again, I'm not completely sure about that, but I think that's what I read, if I remember correctly. So this is another armor rune reducing coming damage by one. Cool. And since our dude's a little bit hurt, our archer, let me actually pop this dude. And you know what? Let me try this uh, mushroom here and see what happens. Plus one HP. Alrighty. And I could actually max him out with this, so... No, I'm gonna actually hold off on that. Let me use it on my hero instead. Since he's in the front, always taking damage anyway. So let's go over here, and we're gonna go up to the next uh, area. Go to the lands of the Duke of Isire. I am ready. Alrighty. And here we go. As we approach this, we should see an NPC here, which is the first, um, one of the, I guess royal generals that you're collecting to get to the end point here. So, we're going to actually take care of this next episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the initial look at Crown Takers. Uh, I know this was more tutorialized for the sake of people who want to just learn about the game. So next episode forward, I'm going to play it a little bit more cautious, or less, less cautiously, less tutorialized, a little bit more free fun with it. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'll have all the information below if you want to check out Crown Takers for yourself. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, I encourage you to leave a thumbs up, leave a like. The support always does mean a lot. And other than that, I will catch you next time.